Hello and welcome to the 11th section of the Protopy course. In this section, we're going to learn really cool techniques, including formula, so that we have a UI that looks like this. And then when you drag, it's going to detect the height of this blue layer. And then it's going to be transferring that information to the amount here. So we're gonna use some formula to achieve that. From Sketch, the screen that we're going to work with is called Dashboard. So we're gonna to go to Protopie and create a new pie. And then we're going to import that artboard. Call Dashboard, set at 3x. There are a few things that we need to set up before we start the animation. The first thing is that we need to use this as real text. In the inspector, there's an option that says convert to text and we're going to click on that and now it automatically takes all the styling so that you don't have to recreate this layer from scratch now it's a text which means that we can animate any of these properties and we can use formula to change the content i'm going to do the same for pay now so i can convert this one to text as well sometimes when you convert uh, the weight is not the same, so I can set back to medium, for example, and I can also change the size so that the text fits. So here I can set to medium, and then I'm going to try to recreate this button because the idea is to transition these shapes into the shapes inside the payment artboard. There are two layers at play here. We have the background green, and then we have this curve shape that's blue. Let's create the first one. I'm gonna click on shape, click on rectangle, and here I can just resize it to the same size. And then I can use the color picker to get the color and simply set the radius to 20. Then I'm going to create the blue shape Click on shape, another rectangle. I'm just gonna resize quickly here and set the radius to 20 again. But this time I'm going to make sure that this is bigger, roughly like this. I'm going to use specific sizes to be more precise. So 16x 50y, the width is 160 and the height is going to be 100. Let's set the fill to blue using this code right here. And let's set the masking for the layer underneath, just like in the design tool. So I'm gonna select this one. I'm going to use as mask, and this will make sure that I don't see the extra parts of this rectangle. Let's rename this to mask and then the blue shape i'm going to name it to quantity okay so let me explain the animation i'm going to use this container and i'm going to resize it as i resize it you can see that it's not doing much and it's not doing what i want it to do because i'm not using constraints yet in fact you're going to save a lot of efforts when using constraints so let's do that I'm going to just animate the container and I'm going to use constraints to adapt to the container resizing. So click on the mask and set to disable fixed width and fixed height and a constraint to all sides like this. So if you do this and you resize, then you can see that the whole mask layer inside this container is going to take the full width and height. I'm going to do the same for quantity and set the constraints to bottom right. The same for pay, bottom right, and then the icon, bottom right. Then we have to make sure to delete the previous button. And then we're going to create a background layer so that we can hide everything in the background while this animation is happening. So I'm going to put this underneath the button and set this to 100%, 100% height as well, and set the fill to the color of the background. 
and let's put everything on top. But let's make sure that the bars are also on top. Rename the rectangle to background and change the opacity to 0%. With this done, I can start the animation. I'm going to select the button and add a trigger called tap. The first thing is to resize that button. So with this selected, set scale and set it to scale to 116 for the width and then 440 for the height. Now if you click this, it's going to resize to the same size that you're going to find in the design. We also need to add a move response and set the X to 130 and the Y to 96. Finally, we're going to animate the opacity of the background, sending it to 100%. And so we should have some basic animation that centers the whole thing. Now we need to animate the opacity for these two layers and also we need to change this to bottom constraint. Finally, there's an extra button here. You can find that in a sketch file. It's this one. So you can decide to import the whole thing or you can just click on make exportable and set at 3x and that is very important. And then you can just drag and drop that exportable layer right here into Protopie. Let me position it properly. The X position to 130 and the Y position to 551 and then set the opacity to zero by default so that when you tap I'm going to animate the opacity back to 100. I'm going to do the same for these two elements so pay is going to animate to zero opacity and then the icon is going to animate to zero opacity and the due text is going to have a bottom constraint now my animation should be good I click here and I see that it's almost exactly like what I have in the design when it comes to scale and move I can make it more interesting by using spring it's going to look like this which is really nice I can even add some delay so a right arrow two times to get to 0.02 .02, and you're gonna see a nice difference so I click here and you can see that it's jumping a little bit and it does this little bubbly animation which is really cool so that's the basic transition and now we're ready to use formula and drag to be able to drag this quantity and then change the text as a result of the drag I'm going to click quantity and this is what I'm going to add as a trigger for drag. When the user drags, I want to affect the scale of that quantity layer. So I'm going to add a response called scale. And this scale is going to have a direction upwards. By doing so, I can drag this layer up and down. And then I'm also going to want to move the text. So I'm going to select the due text and add a response for move and direction up and down so like this the text is going to follow the quantity finally when I drag I want to change the content of the text so I'm going to select quantity add a trigger select detect and here I'm going to detect the height so detect means that anytime there's a change to the height, it's going to call this response. I'm going to select the due text and add a response called text inside detect. And this is where we can start using formula because text is very manual and then formula can be more dynamic. I'm going to select this formula icon and then do tilde to be able to search I'm going to search for the layer called quantity and I want to have the height value. 
press OK. When I do this, whenever I resize this, it's going to take the height, which starts at 100. Then I can add a dollar sign in front. The way you do this is kind of like JavaScript. So double quotes and then plus. Inside the double quotes, I'm going to put the dollar sign. Press OK. So now I have my dollar sign. If you want to learn more about what is possible, you can click on the question mark and then you go to this page. It's going to tell you all the functions, all the calculations, the layer properties, as well as different manipulations that you can do with your formula. Next, I would like to have this formula applied on tab. So inside the tab trigger, I'm just going to copy and paste this text response like this. So now when I tap, it applies the formula right away. Another thing we can do with formula is to transform the text to capitals, just like in the design. So I'm going to select a new trigger called start and I'm going to select do add a response called text and then set the formula. For the formula this time, I'm going to use the uppercase function, which is expressed like this, just like in code. And then for the content inside the parentheses, I'm going to press tilde to search for the layer called do in six days. And then I'm going to set the property to text and press OK. This will transform the text to all caps. I might need to change the size of the bounds so that it fits. This is looking great. The text works, the formula works. I'm gonna add some bells and whistles in terms of animations. So we're gonna also animate back to the where it was. First of all, using the quantity layer, I'm going to add a trigger called touchdown. During touchdown, I'm going to apply a 3D rotate effect on the whole container called button. So clicking on button, add 3D rotate, set the angle to 10 and make sure to change from rotate by to rotate to because rotate by is going to add 10 every time that you do a touchdown. Likewise for a touch up. So when it's released, I'm going to click on quantity, add a trigger called touch up, click on button, set to 3D rotate, set rotate to instead of by zero. Here's what we have. So I click here and then when I drag, so as I touch down, it does this really nice 3D effect. But when I release, it does the rotate back to zero. But the direction is kind of weird because it kind of does a 360. What you can do to avoid that is to simply change the direction of your rotate. So I'm going to click on the second one when it's on touch up like this. When I drag, it does a little rotate. And when I release, it rotates back to the reverse direction. Now, all that's left is to be able to click on the background and resets all the animation to the way it was. So I'm going to select background, click on trigger at tap. Then for every single layer that I animated, such as the button play, I'm going to add a response for reset. So button reset, do reset, icon reset, pay now reset, quantity reset, mask reset, and finally background reset. Now when I test my animation, and tap the background, it just goes back. I just need to recapitalize these letters as well. So I can just take this text in the start and copy and paste to the tab for background. Just make sure that this text response is after reset because reset kind of resets the non caps and then the text being after is going to apply that formula. 
Another thing we can do is to change the background color uh, during the animation. So I'm gonna select the background and here add a color animation to the background, just like in the design. And if I do this, I also have to change the mask to white. So color animation, set it to white. Now I have this really nice animation, but it's gonna bug if you click on the area of the blue because it kind of conflicts with the touch down and touch up and I was not able to fix this. This is a prototype, so of course you're gonna run into these problems. So it's not always going to be perfect, but the most important thing is that you can explain to your colleagues and engineers how you want your animation to look like. And of course, if you find a solution to this problem, then feel free to send me a message. But the most important thing for me was to teach you the techniques involved, including the formula, the way this transition is built, and also how to use drag, how to affect uh, the values in the formula. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. In the next one, I'm going to teach you how to use range to detect values for an animation completion and then do some really cool card animations. See you in the next session.